Welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. This week we have a special episode right here in our living room about the tragedies that happened in Louisiana, Minnesota, and Dallas. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. I'm Courtney Rashawn. And I'm your main man, Sydney Wayman. <laughs> We're going to get started <laughs> with the conversation about, you know, what happened. So our President Obama addressed the nation from the NATO summit in Poland, right? President's his response to the African American men that were killed and then the police officers were that were that were killed by the allegedly murdered by the army veteran Right. After the, the, after the peaceful Black Lives Matter movement was um, um, rally was about to be over. Right. So President Obama talked about that, and what he said, I quote: "Americans of all races and all backgrounds are rightfully outraged by the inexcusable attacks on police in Louisiana and Minnesota." The president, end quote. Um, the president also urged Americans to, I quote. Not let the actions of a few define us all. The demented individuals who carried out the attack in Dallas was no more representative of African Americans than Dylan Roof, the suspect in Charleston, South Carolina church shooting, was a representative of white Americans. Or Omar right. Martin, the gunman in Orlando, the nightclub massacre, is representative of Muslims. They do not speak for us. That's not who we are, end quote. What do you guys think about that? Well, I think yeah, it would have been it. nice if he had said something about the uh, the, the police officers who uh, murdered uh, the two young men um, because they seem to be representative of what happens in police departments. You know what I mean? So, like, he's saying, yeah, you know, um, this guy who shot the cops in Dallas, he's not representative of black Americans. The uh, the Muslim who shot the people in Orlando, he's not representative of black Americans. But what about the cops who are killing young black men? What are they representative of? How is he going, where do they fit in the narrative? Right. You know, I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where do the police I'm, fit in, in Obama's address? What, where does the police fit in as it relates to what's happening to black men? Well, where, what, where, where does, who do, who who do the cops that killed that murdered these two black men, right? Mm -hmm. One in uh, Baton Rouge and one in um, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Who do they represent, right? Who do they represent? We know that they don't represent cops. I think they represent well, themselves and their own biases. I mean, that's what I think fear, they represent. Yeah, and fear. Yeah. And fear, right? And, and poor and, and training. So, and so and so, I guess what I'm saying is, we see we would see the uh, Macau Johnson, Michael mm -hmm. Johnson, yeah. um, mm -hmm. as an uh, outlier as a deranged person who snapped, mm -hmm. right? And he sh he doesn't represent most black people. The, the guy, the Muslim, um, mm -hmm. snapped. He doesn't represent most Muslims. The idiot in um, Charleston, South Carolina, mm -hmm. the white guy, he's an idiot. He's crazy. He snaps. He okay. does something stupid, right? Okay. These cops, are they idiots? Are they deranged? Do you not think that they can snap? In, yeah, in, think, in that yeah. kind well, of all right. So if that's the case, if that's the case, then we have to accept their behavior as the cops snapping under pressure. Under and, pressure, right? right. But, but there was but, no but pressure. There was no pressure. If you look at those videotapes, those cops were not threatened at all. No, but I think it's a but different set of circumstances. But I think it's a job. Is, there's pressure with, with the job. Right. If you have a job where your life is at risk every day. Mm -hmm. There is a there is an underlining pressure that you kind of always deal with. I mean, I don't have that kind of job. I don't right. have that kind of job. Right. I, the worst thing that can happen in any profession is you get fired, not right. killed. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mean, further to your point, though, I think that I mean it's a it's a huge problem. Like you're you're, pro you're not su you're supposed to be calm under pressure. That's what being a cop is. You right. have to be able to calm things down level things mm -hmm. out, de-escalate. And it seems like a lot of these people who are in these situations don't know how to de-escalate. It's like, okay, boom, bam, I'm killing you. And that's right. a real problem. So how do you, right. Right, how do you test that? Because that, that has to be something that you can test if their, their personality is one that would de-escalate de a situation or a hothead. What? Because most times right. you see that it's hothead cops it's where they've done it uh, several yeah, times and, right. and they're always fighting. And it's yeah. not like it's some kind of meek and docile police officer yeah. that all of a sudden sh sh shoots someone. It's not really More that. Except the last it's one, the guy that was in the car, the guy with that with a woman went live. Mm -hmm. 
With Jonas, yeah, Geronimo Jonas, yeah. Th- yes. That police officer just seemed very nervous. Extremely nervous. Right. And then it comes out, and you had yeah. said this first, actually, that there was a recording that apparently they matched the description of some burglar su- suspect that they were looking for. Right. And so they were like, okay, so they said they stopped them for a broken tail light or brake light or what it right. was. And then it was like, okay. So, I mean, not to excuse him in any way. But I think that was the real reason that that they stopped him. It had nothing to do with... The funny thing is that, you know, the arguments you guys are presenting seem to excuse the kind of behavior. Not at all. Can I finish my point? Whoa, not at all. But okay, go on. Can I finish my point? Thank you so much, Casey. Okay. That wasn't the intent. If that's how you took it, that was not the intent. Oh, that's not the intent. But I guess what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, in these instances, cops cannot be allowed to use or shouldn't be allowed to use deadly force, especially in instances where where they are not threatened or no one else's life is threatened. It, it doesn't work. Like it shouldn't happen that I, way. I'm agreeing with you, though. I'm not, well, I'm I not mean, excusing. Oh, I'm not it's excusing. pressure. Oh, they pressure. No, no, no. You know, they, they live in life and death every day. Well, that's the that's, that's a They cop. are live. That's, a, that's not true. Yeah. Well, for, for a black man driving a car, you know, that's life and death, too. Should I carry my gun and shoot a cop as soon as he walk up to my I'm car? Not, I'm not saying that. But, okay, so we, <laughs> we have to go to the next story. But, I mean, we're talking about, you know, oh different gosh. things and, and how perhaps we can find some solutions to this. Yeah. Right. Well... Because we, we know the this. problem. Yes. We yes. need the remedy. Exactly. So we talk about this a lot on the show, basically about economic empowerment and investing in the black community. And then that would be a way for the establishment to, to respect us more. Mm-hmm. So now there is an app for that. It's called <laughs> Where You. Yes. The app aims to create the largest database of black owned businesses in the country. And it's organized by category and peer to peer review. Okay. The app's creator, Dr. Dion Mahaffey, says, quote, it will take all of us across all socioeconomic statuses to build black wealth. True. We've got to invest in our own community. For us, community can't be limited to where we are domiciled since many of us live in non-black neighborhoods. End quote. The app is available for iPhones and Androids. What do you guys think? Wow. I don't think many of us I don't think many of us live in non black uh, neighborhoods. You know, I think most of us live in black neighborhoods. Most I of find who? it just Most you of do? us. No, just I don't you really. Don't. I bet it's mixed, my area. <laughs> you're just a okay. no. provocateur. Listen. I'm not, I'm, no, you know, what, you know what, what it is. What it is, what it is. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so we're outraged and whatever. So now we're going to do business with black people. You know, what? What? what is so unique, <laughs> uniquely crazy mm-hmm. about black people is yeah. that it takes these kinds of things to get them to start thinking about doing things that they should have been doing all along. Why? Why do you think that is? Why do I think that it that that's true? Your statement, why do you think that that's, that's the truth? Why? Why, why do I think my if, statement is the truth? No. Why do you think? If your statement is true, why? Why, do, why does it take you? like all this out of chaos. So, so I guess, guess before this though, uh, this has been fine. in the, this is in the works for you know, a while. You know, over I the know past over the past question. year or so, yeah. you know, there there like bunches of groups that are starting out. Oh, you know, start your business. Let's support black businesses. Let's create these databases. Let's do all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And look, I've been supporting black business development since 1987 when I worked for a black bank up in Harlem, and. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the issues about it is that you can't develop black businesses, right? Yeah. You can do it, but that's what you do, develop black businesses. And what we need to do is develop the black economy. And that's how an entirely, that? and that's, how do you do that? that is an entirely different discussion. One is you need to be strategic. Like, have you ever noticed, like, these... Well, I get my shirts done at the Chinese Laundry, right? Because they do shirts well. They've, all, they've known, been known to do that, right? But you go there, you drop your shirts off, right? And then... Some part of the day, there's a van that comes up, right? And he stops, he takes the shirts from that laundry, he goes to the next Chinese laundry, boom, 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 right? So here's an instance where you have a bunch of Chinese launderers, right, who have all of their stuff. Going to this one guy. One guy, right, who does everybody's work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's economic development. It's also you, you're talking about cooperation so, among different businesses. Well, Is that what well, you're saying? You know, it's, I'm talking about developing an infrastructure where businesses support businesses. You know. Okay. And and I, you know, it's like. But I mean, but what's your issue with this? Because you have to start somewhere. So right. what's your issue with this? So you know. So all right. Let's say hypothetically, you live in Bedford Stuyvesant. I do. Okay. Um, I live in Crown Heights. Okay. Um. How far will you drive 
to do your grocery shopping? Um, I come downtown, or I'll go to. All right, now um, when you go downtown, Gateway. Gateway, okay. Now, um, are there black grocers in Gateway, or is there a gr black grocer downtown? No. No, but you would support. I go you, to a. But go, you, excuse me. You would support a black grocer, though, right? Of course, I would. Okay. My meat, so my, if my I meat market that I go to is, is he's black owned. All right, great. So you go to uh -huh. a black owned meat market. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I go to a black owned meat market too. That's where I meet. Lord, but no, come on, come on, man. No, no, no. The point, right. the point is, right, so we put together this database. You know database. you always want the, the more. You got it. You, the you point is, well, listen, listen, look. <laughs> the point is, you, you put together this database, how functional will it be if these businesses are all, all over the place? No, but I mean. You mean you want them in one area? No, no. A business has to serve its, its customer base. So if I created, of course if I, they, of course it is. Right. We're lost. They I'm, I'm, I'm very lost. They created the, the database so they have um, access to all yeah. the black-owned businesses, exactly. which is In, great throughout, the, throughout nation. the nation. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not great, but what I'm saying is, all right. So someone so wrote you're a book. Just saying, I'm okay, saying they there are so no few, no, there are so few black businesses that this app will work for some people but oh, for no, most but what, people but what you're not getting right so if i go to baltimore and i want to get soul food this app is going to it's a location based right. app right so what right. it's going to do it's going to show me all the cleaners in the area right. that's black but you can't, right. and, you then, can't and all you got to do and then to do that app all you have to do is res register with the um chamber of commerce black chamber of commerce right. and then right. whoever registers their companies that'll be on the app mm -hmm. my, yeah. my friend so nobody's going to verify like nobody's going to verify that the business is black we we didn't say all that. Didn't say we, that. We, we didn't, we hey, didn't say all that. Because, we, yes, know, yes, um, please. Then, ending then, ending, then, ending then, the segment on a lighter note. <laughs> congratulations to Sierra and Russell Wilson. Yes. They recently tied the knot, and the wedding took place in uh, Peckforton Castle in Cheshire, England. Very nice. Congratulations yes, to yes, them. Very very nice. Keep it locked. When we come back, we're going to be bringing you more of what's popping. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now we're talking about, well, we're continuing to talk about um, the political unrest that we are experiencing now as a nation. Uh, we need to really think about our political candidates and what they're, what they're saying about what's happening now. Because if you think about it, everyone's, no one's talking about Trump news. Nothing has been Trump anything in the last, like, week and a half. So you know you got to watch him closely. So I'm Googling what Trump's talking about. And this is what Donald Trump says. He says, and I quote, we need to show compassion to one another. I guess not the Mexicans. That was me. End quote. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't have a lawlessness existence. What does that mean, lawlessness existence? And then Hillary Clinton, she's talking about we all, we all need to get along. And his, but historically, black people have been the target of hate crimes. 50s, 40s, 30s, slavery. I mean, when, when do we start getting along? Everyone's talking about the police officers, and, but no one's talking about the quotas that the police officers must adhere to that no one wants to even say that they have a quota system. There's a quota system. These random stops is because they need random arrests because they have a quota system. They have to, they have to arrest a certain amount of people within the month. Yes. And what happens is mostly it's social economic, black, Latino, poverty stricken people will have their insurance not current. Maybe their license is suspended. It's like an easy mark. And what's happening right. after right. that Right after right. that, it goes left, and now we have all this, all well, these killings. That's exactly what happened with Philando Castile. I mean, it said in the previous fourteen years before he was killed, he was stopped fifty-two times. Fifty-two times. Half of those times, it didn't even lead to any charges. Wow. And but it was very small things like driving without insurance, um, not so having a seatbelt. And you're supposed to have your seatbelt on. That's the law. Right. But it's like some of those. There's so half. But right. it happens you know on Thursdays, like Ticket Thursday. You ever heard of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that they have to make a quota, but I just feel like this. I mean, I think that everything that's happening is just ridiculous and it's disgusting. But, you know, you can't uh, give police sometimes probable cause. You already know that you're driving while black. So, you know, I feel like you should go the extra step to make sure your insurance is up to par. Make sure that you have your seatbelt on. So there's listen, no listen. reason, there's no excuse to be pulled over. And then but, that's well, okay, okay, wait, 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 I want to no. no. speak to this, though. I want to yeah. speak to this, though, because the statistics will, like, like, say it all, basically. Right. So black people, right, are only 12% of the population, right? Mm -hmm. They make up 
thirteen percent of the traffic stops. Right. Whites are sixty three percent of the population, but they only make up ten percent. How does that like equal? There's no equality Driving there. So black. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So there's really a racial element to it. I mean, it's not being explained in any way. And of course, yes, you might stop them and see they don't have a seatbelt on. Yes, you have to enforce the law. But if you're targeting black people, that's not right. No, but absolutely I guess the other not thing, right. The other thing that's not right, though, um, and this is, you know, with Ferguson and with Baton Rouge. Uh, Baton Rouge is predominantly black, but 70% of their uh, police force is white. So my right, question would my, right. my question would be nepotism, how is it nepotism? You know, I would say my question would be do they vote? The same with Ferguson. Right. How do these black communities that are predominantly black um, not have a city council, a city administration right. that represents them? Mm -hmm. That that creates a police force that represents them. So I mean, I'm all down with. The cause, and we, we, we are all down with the cause, but mm -hmm. I think sometimes we have to ask a serious question, and the serious question in Baton Rouge is, what's up, y'all? Are you, are you registered to vote? Like, instead of holding these marches, what they should do is have voter registration drives. And right. what they should I do totally is say, agree. you know, we are mm -hmm. definitely totally going to go out and vote because what we need to do is take control of our city government. And then one of the next things we do is, uh, you know, do what we can to create some balance in our police force so it represents more right, of right. us. But right. a lot I of mean. times, uh, well oftentimes, social economics has a plays a very big part and the lower you are on a totem pole you feel like you're not invited to the conversation. So voting when you're trying to pay your bills or keep your cable on may be something very secondary right. and that's right. that's what it is. That's it's like true. if you if you're speaking to the, I'm sorry, if you're speaking to the the black man Sydney and people like you people with your background and where you came from Lovely that's a different right. conversation than I'm having with Ray Ray on who is block. like what are you talking about <laughs> I'm not bowing down yeah. me nothing right. and if block. you can't and if, if I have tricked Ray Ray to believe that he is not a part of the conversation he's not coming to the table right he can't right. change city government if he doesn't even understand what city government does or, or feel supposed like, well, to do you know, feel like she doesn't have a voice. Right, right. Well, you know, I guess what we're saying is, you know, what more can be said than what's already been said? And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's like Yogi Bear, this is deja vu all over again. Mm -hmm. And, um, totally you know, these, these young black men being murdered by cops and, you know, these cops being murdered in, in some kind of act of vengeance, we, we see this happening too much. And, um, you know, I understand that cops live a dangerous life, right? right? Being a cop is dangerous, right? But it is not, to me, so dangerous that their first response in dealing with a situation is that their gun goes off. Because in a lot of instances, it would seem to me they could have de-escalated the situation, right? I grew up in North Philly, and cops were very um, confrontational, mm -hmm. right? And they never looked to de-escalate. They, they did whatever they could to escalate mm -hmm. the situation. Well, you saw that in right? the video. You saw how right, exactly. Randall's was the right. one, uh, Castile's fiance was the one, I'm okay, sir. Yes, right. I'm keeping exactly. my hands up, sir. You can right. see my hands. Like, she was the right. one de-escalating, and he's freaking out. Right. Now, I mean, yeah. some people some people might look at what happened in Dallas and point to that as it being uh, an example of the, mm -hmm. the how yeah. dangerous you know, mm -hmm. being a cop is, right? right? But but the reality is that those are two separate instances, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what happened in Baton Rouge and in Minnesota, you could see on those videos, you could definitely see that the cops were not threatened right. to the extent that uh, they should the have force. killed right. someone. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the guy in the Baton Rouge, that was straight up murder, as far right. as I'm concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He pulled the gun out, boom, boom. You know what that I mean? It, it is awesome. absolutely ridiculous. Look at the, thing is, the thing is though, and, and this is what scares me. Right. This is what scares me. Like, people like you, who I respect, sometimes, 
um, when you're right. And you know, that's, that's often. That's not that's often. Um, right. But but people like you <laughs> will, will, will will fall into this socioeconomic argument about how you know Ray Ray and the boys well, in the well, hood. Well, it's so, can I finish though, my point? Well, if you attack me, I must defend finish, myself, can, sir. But can now, I finish my point? You just had a whole soliloquy. That, 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 I was, that was my I'm story. Conversation is that was my story. All right. That was my story. Can I finish? You treat me like you treated Courtney the other week. Pastor. You know what oh I mean? Lord. Don't bring me into it. I know. <laughs> the point is, the point I'm trying to make is like, how can you, how can you right justify <laughs> black folk not voting by saying that they are socially, economically detached from? But that's I said what's going sometimes. on. Sometimes, yeah. I'm talking about sometimes. who I talk to. I'm talking about I'm from yeah. East New York, Brooklyn, and I have right. friends that have that's not that, that come it. from that's different walks of it. life. And when I talk to them about certain things, that is the commentary that I that am might with. be the commentary. But it's time for us to educate people and say, you know what? In order for us to really sometimes stop education this, isn't excuse enough. Excuse me, can sometimes. I finish? Oh my can goodness! I finish? Can I finish? Man, I don't care. The point I'm trying to make is until we say that we are going to go into our communities right. and start dealing with these folk who say it don't work, mm -hmm. until we do that, we'll be marching for the rest of our lives because there'll be more black men shot. There'll be everything will stay the he same. Has a point. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate the fact that you finally uh, no doubt, come my to brother. Side. <laughs> uh -uh. You know, I mean, you know, I, so, that's my thing. So I just want to say, what do you guys think about? segregated policing. I was having a conversation about the police go going into neighborhoods that they feel fearful of already, right? You know, black right. areas, white cops from Long Island, all that stuff. What if people that came from the community had to police those communities where you knew? Remember, they have those, mm -hmm. they have the community affairs officers and all that stuff, and it's right. supposed to, what do we think about that? What do we think about that kind of policing? You know, because they well, I mean, I feel like, like all police, you know, yes, you should know the neighborhood that you're policing. You but you have, have good... to feel a part of it. Yeah, yes, right. yes. But if you don't feel, if you're in it, even if you're in it for five years and you don't feel a part of it, you're not a part of it. I'm talking about the policing where it's It comes from the community? Some the kind of, coming. yeah, some kind of area similar so that, you know, they're not shocked when... I don't know. It's the Fourth of July, and everyone has a bunch of firecrackers going. Well, off. you know that's what right. this, that was. A, what the Dallas chief of police was saying. That was whole, his whole like premise. Mm -hmm. You know, if he was talking about it, and he was like, you know, all oh, you Black Lives Matter protesters out there, join us. Mm -hmm. Come, you know, come into you know our our police force, and you know, do better. You know what I mean? Show us like make changes from within. Basically, that was his, you know, argument. Well, I Some Black Lives Matter protesters were like, it makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about this yes. all day, literally. But you know what? We have something really special for you. We have DJ Annie Red, great kid yeah. dynamo. Oh, cute. Keep it where you she got is. it. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. They DJ and they make their like own rap song, so I thought it would be good and it would also be, um, also good because it, I'm a kid, so it'd be like. Really <laughs> <laughs> you are a kid? No, you're an adult. Uh, you are a brand, okay? <laughs> exactly. You are a brand. What am I doing with my life? Okay. <laughs> now, how do your friends feel uh, about everything since you have so much going on? Um. Are they supportive? Do they love it? Do they say, go they're Annie? They're jealous. They're jealous. Oh. That's right. Oh. I would say, oh. 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 I hate on you. No, what's wrong? Um, <laughs> mostly because they're just like, they're, 
because when I was doing my video for my rap song, when they were like in the background right there, they were just staring at me. They tried to do what they could, but I was um, doing more energy than they could. Because you're the star. Exactly. You're the star. You're the boss. So talk <laughs> about the boss. Like, how did you come up with those lyrics? Those lyrics are fire. You said you were the um, boss. <laughs> mostly because. I wanted to inspire kids mm -hmm. that they know that they can do mostly like they can go, get good grades at school. God know that they're with them, mm -hmm. and yeah. Wow. Wow. And so you wrote all that stuff yourself. I can't believe it. A little help for my mom. A little nice. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. But wait a minute, we have a bunch of paintings that you have done. This one was a collage. I have art camp, which is I just. It's a camp where you just go and they and they have canvases for you. You can do whatever you want. They have pictures. You do spray paint. You can do spray paint. Really? Mm -hmm. um, they have they have a bunch of different stuff for you to do. Like you can paint different stuff and mm -hmm. yeah. So I went there. They helped me work on this. And this is I a collage, really, right? Really it's like a collage that. of the danger endangered species of different types you got um, a rhino in the savannah you got a polar bear in the north pole mm -hmm. um you have a panda which is mostly in the forests of india oh wow this is awesome oh my this gosh awesome. she's an amazing girl, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. girl. Now, I, I, I don't know what to say she is okay. so smart yes. now we i love this one too but i have to ask you about your star wars collection <laughs> What inspired so we the Star each hold Wars collection? Yes. All right. Star Wars collection, I was, I just started like, you know how the new, well, Look at that. I did this, I think. I love it. I did this last year, but you know, and um. At six years so old. a lot of stuff yeah, last year. Yeah, at six school, years old. And at school, they were talking about Star Wars, so I was like, wait a minute, maybe I should do a Star Wars collection. Uh -huh. And then I started with the Star Wars collection. Um, I start, my first one was Dark Vader right yes. there. Oh, and Dark and Vader, the Stormtrooper. I had the Stormtrooper there and Dark Vader. That was my first one. I think I moved on to this one. I think it was Luke Skywalker. And this one, I'm missing one of them, which I did um, Han Solo and Princess what? Leia, but you I was missing that one. You have to do Lando color? Calrissian. Yeah, what, which color is the, um... <laughs> so you're a fan. I don't know. I love Star Wars. For this, for this one, this is, um... C-3PO and R2-D2. Have to kick a verse for yes, us. Yes, yes. Kick a verse. Come on. <laughs> yes. 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 Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm the boss. 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 Yeah, I'm the boss. 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 I'm the boss. 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 Yeah, I'm the boss. Boss, 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 boss. I'm DJ Eddie Red. You know who I am. What I say, Eddie, you say Red. Eddie, Red, Red. Eddie, Red. Red. I'm the best, so don't be depressed. I'm the best, and I cause no stress. I'll tear up like a piece of paper. Yeah, cause you're a bit thicker. What? <laughs>